Hello guys, welcome to GTV Presents Tech View, another episode. Uh, in this episode, I'll show you how you can upgrade vCenter from one version to another version. It doesn't matter what kind of version is this. So I'll show you step by step, but the reason I didn't say about the version number because I don't know what kind of version you have on your environment and also what's your target. So I will show you how you can upgrade vCenter 6.7 to higher version. So the higher version means vCenter 7 or vCenter 8. And vCenter has a, like different different types of version VMware already released, which is uh, 7.0, 7.0, update one, update two, update three, uh, three, and also each and every one update has say uh, update 1a, update 1b, update 1c like this. So I will show you step by step. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. All right, this is my vCenter. So this is vCenter vSphere web client. That's called, this interface is called vSphere web client, right? And this is vSphere appliance. Well, vCenter appliance, appliance management. So if you already updated, like up, not upgrade, updated your vCenter, if you're using vCenter 6.7 and you already applied the latest version, like not latest version actually, latest patch of 6.7. So the last patch for 6.7 released on 2022, October, I believe 10 or 12, and after that, there is no update or patch for 6.7 because 6.7 uh, was end of life in 2022, October 15. So after that, there is no patch. So if you have the latest and greatest patch on your uh, vCenter 6.7, then now your company or your organization, or maybe you are trying to upgrade it to 7 or 8, but you need to know till which version you should go. So for doing this, you need to check version compatibility. First, you need to have some notes from your existing vCenter. So I have recorded here some information. So this information I recorded from um, vCenter appliance management. So this is my uh, appliance management URL. This is the version I have which is 6.7.0.55000. This is the latest version, latest patch for 6.7. And also this is the last patch for 6.7. And the build number is 22509723. And for vSphere web client, it's the same thing, but build number is a little bit different. So that's why sometimes you're gonna be confused. So this is the client, this is the actual appliance, right? And now your job is to check the matrix actually which version you can go which version can allow so how you can check it just simply go to the google and just type vmware upgrade matrix then you're going to get the upgrade path product uh, integrity matrix so if you click there it will take you here and just from uh, select a solution just type b center then you're going to get this one the like link uh, like drop down so from the drop down, select the vCenter server. And then, and also one thing, make sure uh, you uncheck both of them. Uncheck both of them. So now you see it shows all of the letters. This is the like top level uh, latest version of eight, right? 8.0 update two. This is the latest one for eight. And also in here, this is the, Let's just let us run for seven. So now, if you have now vCenter 6.7 update three, and this is the version you have right now, the last one, right? So from here, which vCenter you can go? Is it supported or is it not supported? So if you look at here, you see with this version, you can go easily, this version easily go this version because this has a green check mark, right? So 8.0.0 you to a update this B center you can easily go this B center you can easily go with from from this one right 
But if you look at here, 8.01D, that means update one, D, you cannot go. Why? There's nothing, right? No information. Why you cannot go? Because the patch you applied here, this is the latest one, right? This is the latest patch of this update for this version, right? But this version is released October 2022. Maybe 8.0.1 update one is released before October. That's why you cannot. So now we can start from here, right click on it, run. Okay, so this is very f like familiar, right? Because when you install when you install the uh, six Messenger six point seven, the times you click on the first option, right? Install. But right now we are going to upgrade, so that's why you need to choose the second option, upgrade. So upgrade, click here, and then it it will show you stage number one and stage number two. And also, it says Messenger server with external platform service controller will be. Uh, converts to the vCenter server with embedded platform service controller. So this is the like old story, like uh, previously on 6.7, vCenter has two implementation. One is external platform service controller, another, another one is embedded. But after 6.7 on vCenter 7 and on vCenter 8, now platform service controller, PSC, is now embedded, no more external. That's what it's mean. It's just giving an alert, nothing else. So what we did so far, nothing. Just click on upgrade and interaction and then deploy the vCenter server, stage number one, click next. And then you have to accept, click next. And then vCenter server appliance, source appliance. What is source appliance? That means the one you have right now. Provide the details for your source vCenter server appliance that you want to upgrade. So my vCenter appliance, my vCenter appliance is this one. So either you, you either you can just, which is this one here, you see? This is the B appliance machine, right? So either you can put it the whole FQDN or maybe the IP address. So let's do it with the whole FQDN. So FQDN, okay. And then connect to source. Now it will try to connect with your existing one. Okay, I'm going to minimize all of those things. So now it's a Vicenter appliance, server appliance is this. Port number this. SSO username administrator views for this, single sign on. And then the password. Password. Because vCenter has two login. One is vCenter vSphere web plan through the vSphere plan, right? Which is you're gonna access through administrator at vSphere.local or maybe if you integrate with the domain, then with the domain user, right? And which one you wanna access through root? The username is root, which is appliance management, right? So that's what uh, I put it here, the appliance management password and the single sign-on password. Okay, now it's looking for ESXA host or vCenter server that manage the source appliance. ESXA host or vCenter server name. So which server now is managing your current vCenter? If you go here, you're gonna see PHOI host 02. My host number two is managing this one, right? So. I'm just copying this one or I can provide the IP address of this one. FQDN or IP address. Now, username. Username is root ESXA and is password. Click next and say yes. All right, ESXA host or vCenter server. Now, vCenter server deployment target on the target. 
So specify the business server deployment target settings. The target is a host or within the server. Okay. Now this will be the new one. So where are you going to deploy new one on ESX host number two or ESX host number one or whatever the ESX, it doesn't matter. Whatever the ESX, it doesn't matter. So our current one is running here. Now it's looking for target. So target one also you can put it in this host or maybe this host or maybe this host is up to you. Or if you have a multiple like 10 hosts, you can choose any one. It doesn't matter. So let me see which one I have available. So uh, anyone, anyone I can do. I can put it the same host or different host. It doesn't matter. So let's do it on host number three. Just do something different. But if you have only one host, just put it the same host. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then root. Your ESX login, right? Click next. Yes. Okay. Now it's asking you what should be your new vCenter name. You can say same thing. Uh, what, what, what is our, this one, okay. Or this vCenter name was, this 6.7, right? This one, so we can say kind of like this same name. It's inventory name, nothing else actually. It's just inventory name. So you can say vCenter 8.0 or uh, vCenter 8. You can say vCenter 8 or ELS.com. And then the password. What should be the password? If you want to change the root password, you can change it. But I'm not going to change because I don't want to make myself confused. So I'm using the same one. Okay. All right. Now it's asking you, maybe your old one, it has a tiny deployment, but in the new one, if you want some, like um, small or medium, large, you can do it. But I know I don't have that many SXA host. So most probably I will have 10 in my home lab. But in your environment, if you have more than 10 host or 100 host, if you have a, like less than 100 host, you should go with small deployment. If you have like more than 100, but not more than 400 or less than 400, then you can go with this model medium. So I'm going to go, I'm, go, I'm going with the tiny deployment and storage size is also just default one. Click next. And now Select the data store, which data store, where I should, or where I can install it, right? Where I will install it. Okay, so this is my vCenter data store. So I this is by default selected. Any one of that, this is my NAS storage, this is my local storage. So any one you can choose. I'm going to choose like vSEN data store and enable thing disk mode. Check mark on it, click next. And now network, VM network or whatever the network I want, I can choose from here. And so actually I have a distributed switch, but this one is selecting um, standard switch, default VM network. Let me see, do I have this one? Let me check. Otherwise, it will. Otherwise, it's going to make some problem when you deploy it. Make sure you have this network configuration. I'm putting on host number three, right? So go to the host number three configuration, then check it, virtual switch, and then go to the standard switch and VM network. You see, VM network is there. So you can put it here, and then later on you can change it after this deployment is done. Okay, so IPv4, IP semi-static, temporary IP address, submit mask and forget. So temporary IP addresses. So you have to have your IP spreadsheet in front of you. Then from there, you can select actually which one you should go. Now I can show you here. So any one of the IPs is gonna be temporary, temporary assigned, okay? So if it is temporary, so we can say, uh, 
I know all of them are empty, so I can say this one, 91, 1.91, something like that, temporary, 91. Temporary, this center, 80. It's temporary, it's gonna be removed. After deployment is done, it's gonna be removed. So let's say, um, temporary piece, 192.168.1.91. Submit mask 255.255.255.0 and default gateway .168.1.1 and DNS is 192.168.1.4. I have a DNS uh, server which has IP number 4. I... And now click next. Okay. Now it's the configuration is done. Now just say finish. Now it's going to start deploying the stage number one, deploy business server. So it's going to take um, 20 to 30 minutes. So we don't going to waste our time here. I'm just going to, um, we just need to wait. It's a waiting game. In some case, maybe it's going to be done with 10 minutes. It depends on your uh, server performance speed. Um, so I'm going to pause the video now and whenever it's done, like uh, like up to 90% or 95%, then I'll, I'll be back and show you actually what's going on. So I'm going to pause the video now. All right, so the first stage is done. Now we are going to continue with the second stage for the upgrades. Click continue. So it will take you to the stage number two. Click next. All right, so pre-upgrade check result is giving me some warning. So if it is a warning, that's fine. So now you select the upgrade data, configure configuration and inventory, estimated downtime 33 minutes, configuration, inventory, task, and event and conf configuration inventory task even and performance metrics. So the first one is by default selected uh, with 1.85 gigabyte, which is configuration and just inventory. And if you want configuration inventory and also the task and events, the uh, old events, then you can go with this one. And also if you want to have a performance metrics, you can go with this one. But I don't need this too, just because this is for my uh, for my for my uh, uh, lab environment. So that's why I don't need like that task and events. But if you want for your organization, uh, most probably you should go with this one. It will take a little bit more time. That's fine. So I'm going to select the first option, click next, and I'm going to uncheck. CEIP, which is Customer Experience Improvement Program. Uh, I'm not going to join there, so uncheck it. Click Next. And then it will show you all the configuration here. And I have backup the source vCenter server and all the record data database. You can check mark. If you don't have backup, it's OK for me because it's my <clears throat> Um, lab B center or like my home lab, but um, in your um, like real environment, enterprise level, you're supposed to have a backup, like backup with third party tools, backup, uh, internal backup data backup. So I'm just going to click finish and click OK. 
All right. So we are almost at the end part of uh, stage number two. The copy the data from the source B center server to the tar target B center, and then set up the target B center server and start services and input the copy data to the target B center. So these three tasks needs to be done. And it will take about 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm not just going to wait for this. I'm, um, I'm going to pause the video now and I'll be back when it's done. All right, so our upgrade has been completed, but after the installation is completed, the stage number two, it shows some uh, message here. If using auto deploy, update the DHCP settings and update the TFTP settings with the new set of uh, terms files from the new auto deploy server. So you, didn't know, you don't need to be worried about this message. And also the second message said BSPR 7.0 disable the TLS 1.0 and TLS 1.1 protocols for improvement of security. So for the security reason, by default, TLS as uh, TLS is a protocol, like for browser protocol. Like when you browse any application and the background is used as security protocol, which, which is called TLS. So TLS 1.0 and 1.1 is by default disabled by um, vCenter and it started from vCenter 7. So uh, we upgraded to 8, so definitely it's disabled. And security wise, it's supposed to be disabled. And also they provide some notes here. If you want to enable it, then you have to go to the uh, TLS uh, reconfigurator tools you have to run the reconfigurator, reconfigurator tools. So the TLS reconfigurator tools, through this, you can enable and disable the TLS uh, version. This is called TLS version, actually. So right now, like most of the application, they're using TLS 1.2 and 1.3. That's all, nothing else. Just close it and it's done. So my installation is done now. I know that my IP address 192.168.1.5. So it will take me to the ELSBCenter67ELS.com. So remember, whenever you set it up, whenever you set up, um, when you create a DNS entry for your vCenter first time, don't put the uh, FQDN with the version because you, you never know when you're going to upgrade it. So now you see our old vCenter URL was. 6.7, like um, FQDN was 6.7, 6.7, right? ELSB Center 6.7. But right now I upgraded to 8, but it still it shows a 7. So you can change it, but there is some other steps where you can change. All right, so I'm going to log in the upgraded B Center, but still I have the old B Center name. We'll fix it later on. Um, we see the you uh, the FQDN is using the old one because we just upgraded, right? That's why. Uh, we can change it. I'll show you how to change it. But right now, I'm just going to show you after upgrade what is going to show. So now this the interface looks like this is the new one, right? Launch the vSphere client, and then log in as administrator. So my yes, my B Center uh, single sign-on login was domain name was bspare.local and the by default user is administrator. If you use something else, then use something else.
All right. We are very close. Uh, I believe I'm able to log in with the new B Center, which is B Center 8. Don't worry about the name because we're going to change it. We have to change it actually. Okay, so look at here, it's, it's, still he shows six, seven, don't worry about this because this is our uh, DNS, like old DNS entry for B center. Uh, this is a B center, FQDN, that's why. But look at here, version updated 8.0.1, you see, build number this. So everything is showing here. So now we have a latest, B center, which is B center eight. So everything, all the configuration is already moved. You see, whatever I had before, the distribution, distributed switch and everything, everything is moved. It's up to date. But distributed switch is not up to date. If you want, you can you see the version 6.6. .6. If you want, you can update it later on. So that's all, that's all for um like how you can upgrade from B Center 6.7 to B Center 8. Or if you go from 6.7 to 7, that's also the same steps. 8 any version, all upgrades is same process. And I hope you guys understand and enjoy this video.